Today we're heading to Wilds of Eldraine Standard to try to make an infinitely powerful creature with the help of a turtle? Hello everyone, it's Seth, probably better known as Ephraim Olive, and it's time for another edition of Against the Odds. So last week, we had our first Wilds of Eldorade Against Odds poll, and it really wasn't even close. It was Blossoming Tortoise crushing the competition. So today, we're heading to our new standard format to see if we can make an infinitely powerful creature with the help of a turtle. So let's talk about what this this wild egg is trying to do jump into some games and see if we can actually pull off this crazy combo so we're built around blossoming tortoise and blossoming tortoise might be the coolest and most unique card from wilds of eldrain it's a four mana three three with a bunch of abilities it pumps land creatures it ramps by milling and putting a land to play from our graveyard when it etbs or attacks the big ability though is activated abilities on lands we control cost one less to activate and that's the ability that allows for our infinite power combo worth noting every other card i believe in magic that has an ability that reduces the cost of activated abilities says it can't reduce the cost below one notably blossoming tortoise doesn't say that so we can reduce costs of activated abilities all the way down to zero and that's what allows for the combo so how do we actually combo off well step one is turtle step two is we need a land that's actually a creature so we got restless bivouac mishra's foundry lands that turn into creatures we also have Remen realm breaker which is a plus one that turns land we control into a 3-3 hexproof hasty vigilant elemental so we need one of these cards along with turtle in the last piece of the puzzle is draconic destiny an enchantment that gives the creature plus one plus one flying in haste most importantly it gives the creature it enchants pay one to give the creature plus one plus zero until end of turn so if we put draconic destiny on one of our land creatures draconic destiny's ability is going to get reduced by blossoming tortoise so it's actually pay zero to give the creature plus one plus zero so we can activate this as many times as we want and make an infinitely big flying Ren and Realm Breaker land, Mishra's Foundry, Restless Bivouac, and kill our opponent on the spot. As far as the rest of the deck, we really care about two things. Protecting Blossoming Tortoise, which can be a challenge. We really need it to stick on the battlefield for a turn. So we got Skrelv and Tiber Stand, Werefox Bodyguard is removal that can also maybe save our turtle. And then we care about finding our combo pieces. So to find turtle, we have Huntsman's Redemption, which second lore counter can sack a creature to tutor up a creature of basic land. We also have Wedding Announcement, which draws us cards and more importantly makes tokens we can sacrifice to the huntsman's redemption to find our turtle then we have kellen to find our draconic destiny it's adventure mode's just two mana to up an or an equipment so the perfect way to find draconic destiny can also snag a sword or ossification for removal rounding out the deck questing druid more card draw and a two drop nahiri's warcrafting some removal that can also dig for our pieces mana base outside of our creature lands pretty typical stuff i guess also the fetch lands kind of unique it works really well with turtle because it's a land in the graveyard we can keep getting back in the side board a bunch more ways to protect our combo a bunch of removal some planeswalkers for the grindy matchups and that is infinite turtle power for wild wild raid standard that's our against the odds deck for this week so let's jump into some games and see just how easy it is to pull off the infinite turtle power combo in standard thanks for watching everyone i hope you enjoy it and I'll be back in a bit for the wrap-up. Today's video is brought to you by Command Fest Orlando, which is happening October 20th through 22nd in beautiful Orlando, Florida. This happens to be the week after Doctor Who releases, so be able to check out some fun new Doctor Who events. Come and meet CGB and Voxy along with some amazing magic artists. Everyone who gets a three-day or VIP pass will get this awesome Edgewell Innkeeper playmat, and there is also a limited number of these beautiful Jaya's Phoenix playmats for sale at the event only. Come and snag the new Reliquary Tower Probo, play unique events like Commander or Chaos Sealed, and enjoy a weekend in sunny, fun Orlando at Command Fest Orlando, October 20th through 22nd. Register today over at CommandFestOrlando.com. Need some magic cards? Well, you can snag them from our sponsor, Card Kingdom, over at CardKingdom.com slash MTG Goldfish. Against the odds time, we are trying to make infinite power in standard with a, a tortoise of all things playing some uh, <laughs> turtle power i mean i guess we can keep this the mirror a eh? well jet mirror gardens go swamp and passes well we will play a tap land and pass the turn plays a land passes well um play the land sort of forge in frontier Yo. 
Wouldn't mind hitting another land. We're gonna need a green source for this turtle at some point. Ossification. Well, let's seek the beast. Okay, we hit a land. We lose the Huntsman's Redemption, but that's fine. We hit our land, which was... That was our main goal here, is just make sure we hit our land drop. Opponent is doing surprisingly little. They must be playing control. That's the only thing that makes a bit of sense. Questing Druid. And Birthright Boon. Well, I mean, we got a lot of... Got a lot of removal. Most removal imaginable for this deck. Maybe our opponent's not playing counters. We're gonna take Draconic Destiny. I mean, we would love to keep hitting land drops, but there is a world. Ah, protection would also be nice, we'll see. Getting in sword hits would be spectacular, but I don't know how realistic that is. Opponent, Liliana, uh-huh. Sure. We do draw land, which is good. So play the land. Ran in Realm Breaker. Take it down. Take a, ooh, this is tricky. Skrelv or Cabretti Courtyard? Skrelv is protection for turtle. Cabretti Courtyard's a land drop though. Yeah, let's take Skrelv. And then Ossification, get rid of the Liliana. Pass the turn. We could have tried to turn on the land and attack Liliana, but Shieldred's Edict gets us pretty good if we go that way. So we have the Bivouac. We also have the Ren, which is one of our best, easiest ways to turn a creature into a land. Well, let's play Skrelv. Play, take up Ren, but don't turn on a land. All right, opponent's gonna kill the Skrelv. Well, in that case, we're gonna run out a Blossoming Sky Tortoise. I guess there's no sky in there, is there? Blossoming Tortoise. <laughs> Mills of Guards. We got a backup in hand, which is good. Worst case, they kill the Tortoise, but we get a land, we still have the Ren. Yeah, there's the removal. So we mill. We get the Cabretti Courtyard, we sack it. We are gonna have to be more careful with our our last remaining Blossoming Tortoise. We don't wanna lose this one for no value. Abundant. Take Numa. Wow. Gets back. Evolve Sleep Ah, sure. I mean, we're actually in pretty good shape here. Opponent, a Valve Sleeper. We can Ossification the Valve Sleeper. We just really want to run our opponent out of cards if possible. So, Restless Bivouac, Ossification. Get rid of the Valve Sleeper. Kellen. Take down Ren. Okay, kills Kellen. That's fine. That's fine. We'll just take a Copper Line Gorge. Play the Copper Line. Oh, just kidding. <laughs> Already played a land. I think we might be doing it, though. She old red. So that gets rid of our red. Opponent's down to one card in hand, though. One. One single card. So we can Ossification. Play the Skrelv. Play the Copper Line Gorge. Not gonna turtle yet. Next turn is our turtle turn. We'll have turtle with Skrelv and Werefox Bodyguard protection. And we got their Draconic Destiny in hand. Opponent Gix, sure. Opponent passes. Well, uh, we are definitely playing a Sky Turtle. I don't know why I keep calling it Sky Turtle. I guess because we want to send the land to the sky and win the game. Make disappear. I mean, we will pay. Mill. Get back a Plains. Equip. I think we're going to do it. I think we're going to do it. I think we actually got it against the best I can standard. Oh, but are you gonna discard your card to try to steal something? <laughs> you could, but it's an option. Opponent, Shieldred. This is the situation where we actually don't care about Shieldred. GG, opponent passes. We draw, oh no, Shieldred damage. Uh, yes, but that's fine because we will fire up a bivouac. We did it. We did it. All right, you're kind of destiny. Oh boy, do not let auto tapper play with this deck because it will tap your creature land every time. Uh, go to combat. And now uh, I think we, we might grow this bivouac a bit, like maybe infinitely. 
<laughs> okay. Okay, we did it. Not only did we do it, we did it against Shieldred. We did it against the best deck in Standard. And that is how you make an infinitely powerful creature in Standard with a turtle and uh, a bivouac of all things. And yeah. Well, that went way better than I would have expected it to go. <laughs> and uh, yeah, we'll just we'll just go to 20. We don't need to go further. Uh, 20 you, opponent, dead, dead, dead. I mean, we could deal a, min a million damage, but then our opponent would have to sit through it and that would feel kind of bad. Uh, all right, opponent's playing Demir, mid-range, shieldrid.deck. What do we want against Demir mid-range? More protection. Maybe the Farewells? Maybe the Gobicons? Gobicons also kind of protection if we can flip it. Sword of Forge and Frontier does not actually feel very good. We also saw Liliana's. So go up the Tyver stands, go up the Gobicons. I don't know how realistically we can flip a Gobicon, but if we do, I mean, we do have the Warcrafting that can flip it. Maybe we have to go down all the Huntsman's Redemptions. Maybe we go one Farewell in two scrolls. Let's try it like that. Well, that was good. That was good. That shows us that it is possible to actually pull off the combo and go infinite, even against a, a Demir mid-range deck, the best deck in standard. So, Shieldred's such a scary card. I feel like we got a little lucky that game because our opponent just didn't do, I thought they were playing Demir Control because they just went draw go for like six turns. So it was a very weird hand for our opponent that they just kept a hand that didn't do anything for a long time. And that gave us the time to uh, to get Turtle going. Turtle, Turtle Power. Can we take down the Nemesis, Demir Midrage, with a Turtle? You know what? I think we tried this. I like the Invasion of Gabacon. I like the Wedding Announcement. We're nowhere near comboing, but we have cards that seem okay in this matchup. All right, well, I imagine they take the wedding announcement. Maybe there's some chance they take the Gabacon. It's gotta be wedding announcement though, right? Like, wow, they do take the Gabacon. Interesting. Uh, Bivouac, go. I'm surprised. Wedding announcement feels like the more powerful card. Okay, so opponent's just planning on taking both of them. Except our opponent also decided to keep a one lander. One land, two duresses. Well, let's see if our opponent draws lands. The answer appears to be yes. Opponent passes. Well, we will play a copper line gorge. If our opponent flashes something in, we can tie stand. Yeah, I think we tie stand it. If we're gonna tie stand, we might as well actually get in some damage because we're not doing anything else. Boom, take that. <laughs> Skrelv aggro. Ooh, draws another land. Okay, that's actually concerning. The one land, the one lander's paying off. Oh, uh, it. Well, we'll discard Cabretti's courtyard for now. Play a foundry, go to combat. Hit the Liliana. Pass the turn. Gonna take down, sure, and passes. How do we do this? Let's play a foundry. Do we try to attack the Liliana? It would be nice to get rid of it. Yeah, I think we do. So fire up the foundry, attack Liliana. Ooh, all right, it actually worked. All right, so Liliana down. Well, this might be the creature land game. Hopefully our opponent doesn't find Shieldred because we have no removal. Those duresses really got rid of all of our, all of our action. Passes. Nope. Foundry, attack, pump. Bivouac, go. Ugh, that's a shieldward amount of mana. Liliana, oh, that's actually fine. Oh, boot it, gonna tick up. Yeah, we don't really care about Liliana. Discard the Razor Verge that I get. Bunner discards a counter. Draconic Destony. Well, Mishra's Foundry. So red, green, whatever. Red, green, white. Fire up the Bivouac. One, two, fire up the foundry. Yeah, I think we just go face, grow the foundry, hit our opponent to six. No shieldreds, no shieldreds. Kaido, oh, Kaido, Kaido doesn't matter. Kaido doesn't matter, does it? I don't think Kaido matters. I mean, I guess it can make a chump blocker. Opponent takes up, discard, discard. Disdainful stroke down. Wow, our creature lands are getting around these endless counters. Opponent gonna make a ninja. 
So we can't win this turn, right? Because of the chump blocker. They have a Liliana. We also need that Liliana to not ultimate. That is also true. Okay, let's fire up a bivouac. Fire up a foundry. Both at our opponent. Grow the bivouac. Opponent chumps. Drops to three. Opponent loots. I mean, now we have two lethal threats, right? Our opponent's at three. We can make two three-powered creature lands. Are we gonna get there? <laughs> Combo in game one and then just... Wow, opponent scoops it up. Well, game one, we saw turtle power. Game two, we saw creature land power. Apparently, just playing a bunch of creature lands can actually get the job done. <laughs> Kind of hilariously, our opponent like tore apart all the non-lands from our hand with those Dereses, but then they drew a bunch of counter spells, and one of the best answers to counter spells is just having a bunch of creature lands that don't care. You don't gotta actually resolve them to get value out of them. Well, that was actually sweet. <laughs> sweet, sweet. We trust that we card draw into Turtle. Plus, like having Turtle in our opener is not that important because we're not really comboing to the mid to late game anyway. Fairies, eh? Sure. Well, fairies means removals and counters. We know that much. Gets and hits us, down to 19. The Huntsman's Redemption. Well, how do we want to do this? Let's play the land, and let's just uh, birthright boon. I think grabbing a ossification is probably worth it here. If our opponent wants to counter it, that's kind of fine. All right, so opponent gonna counter the Kellen. Eh, we might as well get in for one. It is possible we win with this deck without going infinite. Ego Drain. All right, doing some fairy thought seizing. Probably wedding announcement seems like the obvious choice. Opponent is down to two cards in hand. That is encouraging. We need another. Yeah, they take the wedding announcement. We need another white source for this bodyguard. Opponent gets and hits us. More Screlves. Well, play the land. I mean, I think at this point we just pass in Questing Druid. All right, Aboira. The clock is increasing. One of the awkward parts of this matchup is our opponent actually has flying blockers. Well, let's seek the beast. Oh, we found a land which is good. The war crafting's not as good. Play questing druid. Ossification. The Aboira. Hopefully they don't have another one. And yeah, we'll pass. Okay, we need another white source at some point, but we're we're at 16 still, so this isn't going that poorly. All right, they do have another Boira. I mean, we have a clock now too, though. Pony on land. Please not shielded. It's us. So they got something. Got to be shielded or Tillion. Oh, shielded. All right, happy fun times. Mishra's Foundry. Well, let's Huntsman's Redemption. Play Mishra's Foundry. Yeah, I think we're in trouble though because of Shieldred. Kind of makes me sad that Fairy Tribal, rather than playing fairies, plays Shieldred. Bone it goes attacking. So we need to find a white source, which I guess means now a white source isn't nearly as helpful. Well, let's see what we draw. We draw, we get drained. Wedding announcement. Sack the 3-3, three, three, get Kellen. How do we beat the fairies though? Well, sack the 3-3. Three, three. Oh, Kellen doesn't even work. Well, maybe we're trying to high roll into the combo. Let's take the turtle. Let's play the turtle. Get a Cabretti Courtyard. Gain a life. Grab a Plains. And pass the turn. Yeah, this is gonna be... It's gonna be tough. Shieldred's still pretty busted. Ah, oh, things were looking good, too, until Shieldred came down. <laughs> and then it all fell apart. Halo Forger for Thought Seize. Yeah, now we're dead. All right, all right. Well, she older it. Still, still good. Still good in Wilds of Eldrain standard. Better than fairies, apparently. I think that's actually like a pretty strong argument of a card being overpowered when, when you're playing a synergy deck and a tribal deck like fairies and 
it's correct to play off tribe card just because of its raw power. I think that's like a pretty a pretty good testament to a card being very very strong, arguably too strong. Well, we'll bring in Invasion of Gabacon. We can bring in a couple fateful absences, maybe if we can find the room. I mean, we do have a bunch of removal. Yeah, let's let's try it like that. I don't know if I can call it fairies if it's playing Shieldred. Then it's by definition not fairies. It's Praetors, Praetor Tribal. There's just no no one and two drop Praetors, so you gotta play some something, and it just happens to be fairies. All right, we'll keep this. I mean, so we got the Draconic Destiny, which is nice. We're gonna have to try the Oops All Shielder deck. I think we've reached that level of memory. Uh, let's just get a green source. Cabretti Courtyard for a forest. Abundant. Island passes. Yeah, let's just bivouac go. Abundant. Take Numa passes. Well, Copperline George. If we play this, opponent flashes in a fairy, kills it. We play this, yeah, let's play Huntsman's Redemption. So it's kind of a sketchy, sketchy spot for it, because if our opponent kills the 3-3, three, three, the rest of the modes essentially fizzle, which isn't ideal. All right, there's a Boira. Well, that's good at least, because that would have flashed in and killed the Wren. Oh, and it gets in for two, down to 19. Kaido Suzuki. Well, I mean, I think we're we're gonna do it. We're gonna get the turtle. All right, blossoming sky turtle. Play the mistress foundry. Play the sky turtle. Mill some cards. Get back a Cabretti courtyard to grab a mountain. So there's actually a world where we just win next turn. That world probably involves our opponent going like swamp shieldred. Okay, well, so much for that. Okay, so that world's looking less likely. This does mean our opponent doesn't have black mana, so our Blossoming Sky Turtle's probably gonna survive. Let's see if our opponent knows what we're doing. Wow, they take the red, interesting. Oh, man, I'm gonna draw with Kaido. Well, let's fire up Mishra's Foundry. Draw. Ooh, Tiver Stand is actually pretty nice. Doesn't help with a counter, though. Well, go to our main phase. I mean, we gotta go for it. The problem is a counter spell. One, two, three. Draconic Destiny. <gasps> they don't. Oh my god. Turtle power. Turtle power. Combat. They also have Trample, so a Flying Chump Blocker doesn't actually matter because of Huntsman's Redemption. And that should be game. Uh, we'll get the bivouac and uh, pump it for free. Pump it for free. We can do this all day, opponent. We can do this all day, fairies. I mean, <clears throat> praetors. <laughs> How would you like to take infinite damage? I mean, at this point, I don't think our opponent can stop it. Doubly so with us having Tiver stand. The way they could have stopped it was a counter. Oh, we got there. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Maybe it actually can work. <laughs> I mean, the counter was the concern, but we we got there, we got there. Is there anything else we can bring in? I feel like, so Farewell is a nice get out of jail free card. I don't know how we resolve it against fairies though. Seems like such a long shot. Huntsman Redemption was actually very good there. It's one of those cards, its ceiling is very high, but its floor is pretty low because it's one of those sagas that's dependent on creatures being on the battlefield. It does make the creature, but if your opponent just kills that creature, things become very sad. Yeah, I mean, run it back. Let's let's just do that again. Last week in standard, infinite mana, infinite life, infinite damage. This week in standard, infinite power with a turtle. In between, we played some cookies. What a what a world we live in. What a what a standard. <laughs> cookies, infinite combos. <laughs> it's actually kind of it's actually kind of beautiful. Fairy seems like it should be a tough matchup, just because they have like thoughtsies, they have a bunch of counters, but we have a turtle, and maybe that's all that matters. I had a turtle once. I saved it from the road, and it lived in my bathtub eating eating Doritos mostly. But then it was freed by some people who thought that turtles shouldn't eat Doritos. Hopefully, Shelly went on to live a productive life. This was a very long time ago when I was <laughs> young and stupid. I, I don't think I'd keep a turtle in my bathtub eating Doritos now. <laughs> I mean, I think we keep this. 
Since we already have Draconic Destiny, oh, double wedding announcement. I mean, we too can play busted cards I haven't rotated. Since we already have Draconic Destiny, I think we just try to Kellen out a uh, ossification. All right, opponent's gonna counter it, sure. Uh, opponent, take Numa and a Kaido. We'd actually like to draw an untap land here. Untap land for wedding announcement, ossification. Well, play the bivouac. Yeah, let's just pass. So opponent's gonna get to draw with Kaido, unfortunately. Gets in. Yeah, this isn't this isn't a great place to be. Kaido's kind of the curious obsession of just letting our opponent draw an extra card every turn. Sleep cursed fairy. Opponent passes. Well, get ready, courtyard. Grab a forest. We're gonna try a wedding announcement. I assume this is also getting countered. Okay, more counters. I mean, next turn we can ossify the Kaido. We'll see if it's too late to matter. Opponent gets in, draws a card. So Kaido's what, drawn three? Well, I guess I made a one-one and drew two. That's still pretty bad. Fairy Dream Theft gonna surveil. We draw a Kellen. Well, we will ossification to get rid of Kaido. And then Birthright Boon, a Kellen to get a ossification. Look at this hand. This is where Draconic Destiny does not actually look all that good. We have a bunch of ossifications, which is something. No turtle though. We're a ways away from comboing here. Pony removes a counter. Goes attacking. Oh, so what's good? How many counters? The sun taps next turn. That was faster than I thought. Well, let's uh wedding announcement. And Skrelv. And opponent, Aboira. And Shield Edict. Well, we get to make a 1-1. Yeah, we are probably in trouble here. Opponent goes attacking. That Kaido coming down early did some serious work for our opponent. We draw a tap land. Well, Ossification. Opponent top decks another counter. Ossification. I don't think any of this actually matters, though. So we can get rid of a Boira. The problem is, we're taking five. Well, they get to untap that. Yeah, Sleep Curse Fairy doing work. Yeah, it doesn't really matter because we just can't stop all these flyers. Well, triple triple spell stutter. Pretty, pretty good. That stopped all of what we were trying to do. There's the turtle, but it's a bit too late to matter. I mean... I guess we we can try to put Draconic Destiny on a token and block. Not a good plan, but it technically could keep us alive for a turn if our opponent's hand is literally nothing. The defensive Draconic Destiny is the worst. Do you have cards in hand, opponent? We've been tutored up a lot of ossifications and it just wasn't enough. The defensive Draconic Destiny is actually holding down the fort at the moment. We're at five though, and we know that Shieldred is in our opponent's deck. I mean, if you're attacking with that, you gotta attack with the Sleep Curse Fairy. All right, opponent gets in for one. Passes. We draw. Questing Druid. Oh, what is our most realistic pathway to winning? Let's seek the beast. Wow, opponent drew the all four spell stutters. Let's play Kellen. All four of them, eh? Opponent gets in for one. Passes. Well, let's play Blossoming Tortoise. So many counters. So many counters. We pass the turn. Opponent draws with the fairy. Well, apparently Farius is playing a lot of counters these days. I guess that makes it even more amazing that we won last game, because that is just a huge number of counters. Is there any possible way we win this game? Oh, come on now, Praetor Tribal. Boo! The question is, so Ren and Realm Breaker can fix our mana. Kind of what, one thing I've learned about questing Druid in this deck is, it's often better on turn three than turn two. Because doing it in like, not uh, hitting a turtle, not being able to cast it actually really hurts. Ooh, green mana's good though. Well, in that case, we're just gonna run out of Skralve, I think. Run out of Skralve, pass the turn. Now we got options. Sir Ginger. Well, we probably don't want to play a planes. <laughs> Almost ran out this Ren. That would probably be a bad idea. Let's let's do it this way. Let's Mishra's Foundry. 
Huntsman's Redemption. Taco, Taco Redemption. <laughs> I went to a minor league baseball game once, and <laughs> and there was some contest where if they scored like five runs or something, everyone would get a free taco at, at Taco Bell. They'd give you like with your ticket or whatever. And there was a really, really drunk guy sitting in front of me. And then like the ninth inning, the team was getting blown out, but they scored like the useless fifth run. And the guy just jumped up and screamed, Taco Redemption. It was, for some reason, very memorable. I don't know why Taco Redemption. Did we just block this? Probably. Huntsman's Redemption. Yeah, we're gonna get rid of the third. Get rid of the Sir Ginger. Opponent makes a dork. I don't think we want to. Oh, uh, well, we're definitely not going to sack the turtle. Uh, sack a creature now. We just threw the turtle. That's kind of the dream. Now we have the turtle and we have the Skrelf to protect it. Can we hit a land? Yes, we can. Well, we're actually kind of close to comboing off. I got to tell that taco story more often. Apparently, that's the secret to six <laughs> to success with Blossoming Tortoise untaps so we can win in two turns if we just happen to draw the draconic destiny we win right away furnace reigns well okay pro red i think so our opponent can steal our scrav so this does get rid of our protection unfortunately we draw jetmere's gardens we pump our turtle yeah there's no way we can win this turn so let's go to combat Get in with the turtle. Get back to Mishra's Foundry. Opponent. Takes a beat down to 15. Play the Ren and Realm Breaker. Play Jatmir's Gardens. A Mishra's Foundry. Yeah, we're gonna pass. We're not gonna we're not gonna cast the Kellen. We don't want our opponent to know that we can kill them next turn. We would rather have it be a surprise. Because if they know that we can kill them, they might kill our turtle. <laughs> and we really would like the turtle to live. Pony hits a land. I mean, in our dream world, our opponent just taps out here. That would be the best. If they don't tap out, we probably still end up going for it. Questing Druid. Ooh, Tyver's stand is actually great. So, play a land. We play, I think we have it. We should have it. We play Kellen. Last card in hand, grab the Chronic Destiny. And then we Ren, Hexproof, Draconic Destiny, stick it on the Bivouac. Please don't get us Auto Tapper. <sighs> stick it on the Bivouac. Infinite Power, Infinite Turtle Power, and we even have the Typer Stand for backup. And now we pump. And we pump, and we pump, and that is the best Restless Bivouac uh, of all time. Wow, that went super well. <laughs> 10 power. Yeah, we can we can do this all day about it. And that was like the smoothest win that we've ever had. Uh, we're gonna bring in Farewells and Brotherhood ends here. I'm actually shocked at how well that, that actually worked. I wonder if there's a lot of pieces for a sack deck now. I wonder if a sack deck with Oni Called Anvil could actually be good in standard. It seems like it could be possible, right? Like, it works really well with the bargain mechanic. Almost like bargain was built for it. Uh, sword feels bad against a bunch of artifact creatures. Uh, Red and Realm Breaker, not necessary for the combo, but there's a lot of a lot of peace in mind in comboing with a hexproof, <laughs> hexproof land. You know at least your land's not gonna get blown out. Also very relevant against uh, Field of Ruin. Not that anyone seems to play Field of Ruin, but that could change if creature lands take off Maybe a Warcrafting. Actually, you know what? Let's go one more. Huntsman's Redemption. Taco Redemption. <laughs> well, that was a that was a pretty surprisingly smooth combo, honestly. <laughs> Maybe the turtle's actually good. Turtle's such a cool card. Definitely one of the coolest designs. We'll see. We'll see how competitive it is. But one of the coolest designs Wizards has made in a long time. Sounds pretty sketchy. I like the wedding. Yeah, we're gonna mulligan. We just can't really cast. Wow, we have the same exact two lands. I mean, I guess this time we'll keep because we have Ren. That is probably not a good justification. Cannot get away from the Copperline Georg Mistress Foundry hand. Let's put a Werefox Bodyguard to the bottom. I mean, I also like that we have a Farewell, which seems like it could just absolutely ruin our opponent's day if we get to it. Um, I don't play the land past the turn. Probably needs to play something we can 
More crafting. All right, get a sack. Make a dork. Draw a card. Finds a goblin blast runner. Sure. Really want a war crafting next turn, I think. Let's let's just run out Huntsman's Redemption. We actually have the full combo again. Whether or not we can get it set up in time remains to be seen. But, I mean, we got the turtle. We got the Draconic Destiny. We need green mana for sure. Or this Ren. Ren's a little scary with Sir Ginger. Sir Ginger, there's not that many Planeswalkers in Standard at the moment. But, good lord, Sir Ginger is so good at sniping Planeswalkers. Opponent gonna sack, gonna draw. Sure. And a Blood Tithe Harvester. And gets and hits us. Sure, 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 sure. Let's decline. Let's just Warcrafting this Blast Runner. Well, at least we're not drawing these cards. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Ooh, no land in the top three. Well, that actually still kind of works out because we get to put them onto the bottom. If we were drawing those three cards for the next three turns, we we're definitely not comboing off with Blossoming Tortoise. So, kind of worked out anyway just to get rid of those cards. We would have rather hit a land, but question's going to be, do we just run out Turtle with no protection? I assume that now that our opponent died to the combo, they're going to be leaving up removal to try to prevent it. Another Blast Runner. What we'll block? We also still have this farewell in hand, so we have a, like, good late game plan. Another Blood Tithe Harvester. Well, now the turtle definitely dies. Oh, opponents only got three lands. You know what? Uh, we will pump nothing. Oh, they sacked a blood, so it doesn't... You know what? We're going to play the turtle. We really need to hit a land here. Any land. <sighs> Thank goodness. All right, we find a Cabretti Courtyard. Zag the Cabretti Courtyard. Another white source for our farewell. If they kill the turtle, we're one land away from farewelling our opponent into actual oblivion. Only three lands on the battlefield. If they don't kill our turtle, we could just go for the combo kill. Back for seconds. Oh, this actually works for our opponent, doesn't it? They can get it to the battlefield, make a blood, kill the turtle. Okay. Okay, okay. Well, we would actually love to just draw a untap land. Skrelv. Well, this is kind of awkward, but I think we need to... How close are we to death? Oh, do we just have to turtle to get a land? That feels so bad. Oh, I hate wasting the turtle, but we got to get to this farewell, right? Or else we risk just losing. Yeah, I think we got to do it. Blossoming Tortoise, number two. Sadly, we know the Blood Tithe Harvester can kill it. But we have to get to this farewell. Wow, no lands, okay. <laughs> well, good Cabretti Courtyard, keeping us alive. Uh, grab a forest. Not gonna bother to Skrelv, because we're planning on farewelling next turn. And then I guess we gotta find ugh, our one remaining turtle if we're gonna combo. Hopefully our opponent just dumps their hand. Hopefully they don't duress. Oh god, that would be bad. We're definitely just, oh, beseech the mirror, okay. We are definitely playing for this farewell. That is that is our whole game plan at the moment. Well, let's see what they find. I'll watch it be a duress. The end. Well, sadly, that means our combo is not going to be happening this game. The good news is we could win fairly. Creature land beat down. I mean, our opponent smacks us for a bunch, but then this farewell is going to be pretty good. Farewell. Artifacts, creatures, enchantments, graveyards. Get rid of them um, all. Down to five. Wrath them all. Well, now the question is, can we win without the combo? Goblin Blast Runner and Oni Call Anvil Returns. We do need to be aware of this. I think we actually want to. Let's Birthright Boon. We might be on the Kellen plan here. Uh, get an Ossification. Ossification. Get rid of the Blast Runner. Kalan's actually pretty good. Even just tutoring a Ossification is pretty sweet. Play the Kalan. Well, backup plan is put Draconic Destiny on Kalan and try to smack you to death. Five is not a lot of life. Ooh, another Anvil. Okay. Is this Anvil second Anvil just to get the, the ball rolling? Yup. All right, so we dropped to four. Opponent gets two one ones. Passes. Well, play the run and round breaker. Take it down. Wedding announcement. Play the land. 
Play the wedding announcement. Play the scrav. And pass the turn. Play some defense. Kills the Kellen. Wow, they're gonna sack. Okay. Down to three. We make a token. Down to two. Obnixilis. Wow, that actually works. Ah! <laughs> yeah, okay. And <laughs> and opponent says good game. Oh, I don't think our opponent said good game when we turtle gomboed them, did they? They didn't think that was a good game. I enjoyed it, personally. <laughs> I thought that was a good game, but... I will say Obnixilis has made a comeback since uh, Wilds of Alderaan. Definitely seen more Obnixiluses than I've seen in many, many weeks. Months. Years, even. Now that we have so many years of cards in standard. But yeah, Obnixilis! From an afterthought to something that you see in quite a few decks, thanks to, uh, thanks to bargaining. Well, let's see if we can combo our opponent. On it. If we can, we might have to tell him good game. All right. Well, we got a bivouac for you. Bivouac, go. Opponent plays a mountain and a goblin blast runner. Uh, let's just bivouac and scrave. Opponent gets in for one land and Sir Ginger. Well, play the land and wedding announcement and no attacks. Sir Ginger is really good. I don't know how it lines up against Wedding Announcement at the moment. We'll see if they can sack an artifact. If they can, we can. Ossification. We do need another green source at some point. And opponent passes. Not a land. Well, we will. Ossification. Get rid of the Surge Ginger. Opponent can sack it if they want. Sack it to gain three. Well, in that case, I think we actually attack with so we can draw a card because we really would like to hit a land Ugh. all right more turtle we have turtles for days we just don't have any lands we need a green source give us that green source so we can do some turtle things our fetch lands actually probably the best okay ready courtyard would be nice we get our green source and then we have a guaranteed land for blossoming tortoise such a good card i i kind of love sir ginger maybe one of my favorite cards from the set have not played in our opponent's deck yet though, but it does seem good in Sacrifice, right? That's very good at growing, Sir Ginger, as you're sacking your Oni Called Anvil stuff. What's the plan, Goblin Blast Runner? All right, take Numa. Or the Casualty. Okay, they're just gonna cast a Beseech the Mirror. Interesting. The Fear Beseech the Mirror. This is where Beseech the Mirror is not as good. When you're casting it and not getting to cast the thing for free, it's actually just a harder to cast Diabolic Tutor. I mean, there are gonna be situations, I guess, where you gotta get something that costs more than four mana, but in general, that's not what you wanna be doing. Down it gets in. We do not draw land. Attack with both. We really need to draw the card. Hit ya, hit ya. I guess we just pass for now. Ugh. Boy, we cannot find a land to save our lives. Opponent. Land. Which is vanity. The Star Trek creature opponent controls mana value two or less. Create a food, create a wicked roll. Sure. So we're going to blow up our Skrelv. And Sir Ginger. Oh, we might get a blowout here. We might get a blowout. Uh, how about a Werefox bodyguard? Snipe the Sir Ginger. Oh, Werefox. Fully powered. Block the Blast Runner. Oh, the two for ones. We might just never, never play turtle this game. Might just be impossible. Hit ya, hit ya. I guess birthright boon. To thin the deck. Birthright boon, snag a. I guess an ossification, <laughs> another ossification past the turret, leave up diver stand. Well, for being stuck on three lands, we're, we're doing some, some work. We have, <laughs> Ossification Tron in hand to answer whatever our opponent plays. So this is actually a situation where we're not really that scared of a shield rid. I don't know if I've ever said that before, but this is the rare, rare situation where, sure, whatever, like shield rid us. Werefox Bodyguard OP. Wow. We draw a land, but the opponent says, oops. Yeah. I wonder if our opponent's playing mobile. I always forget that people play arena in mobile. And some of this stuff is probably harder if you're playing in mobile. So I wonder, I wonder if that timeout or whatever could possibly be that. Well, yeah, I think this is worth it. Actually, do we even care? Maybe we just sack it. Yeah, you know what? We'll protect it. I think that's fine. It's not like we're ever going to have enough green mana to... <laughs> to play it and uh, play turtle in the same turn. So I guess we might as well get value out of it. Opponent, Blood Tithe, Harvester. And 
and which is vanity to get our token. Yup. How about a green source? <laughs> Mishra's Foundry. Well, play the land. Run out a ossification. Get rid of the Blood Tithe Harvester. See what the fox says. Uh, which is apparently take three. And Kellen, go. This is your time to do something. They need to, at a minimum, deal with this Kellen, or else Draconic Destiny on Kellen is just lethal. Somehow we never got double green against a turtle and we're winning, which is kind of shocking. Razor Lash Transmogrant, that does not matter at all. All right, Beseech the Mirror. Does the literal best card in our opponent's deck matter? That's the real question. Our opponent can cast presumably any card in their deck. Is there a card that actually saves them here? I guess the end doesn't do it. Hey, Shieldred. I mean, I guess that's almost always the, the correct choice is just take the Shieldred. Now here he's Warcrafting. Aha. Uh -huh. Well, Ossification. Get rid of the Shieldred. And opponent scoops it up. Well, there is a risk to this combo, which is uh, the end is a real thing that our opponent can do to us. However, we got there. We got a combo kill. We got absolutely blown out. And then we got the fair win. So, yeah, turtle power. <laughs> uh, the deck's so weird, but it does win sometimes. I guess that's a, that's a good against odds deck. <laughs> it wins sometimes and is kind of weird. Yeah. Sand's not bad. We don't have the turtle, but we got some card draw. We have a tutor. Ooh, mono red, okay. You know what? I think we actually just run out this questing druid. I don't think we have the time to wait this game. I think we gotta play it, and then we can start growing it with ossifications and wedding announcements. Ginger brute gets counter. If they spend a burn spell on it, they spend a burn spell on it. Opponent passes. Well, play a planes, and I think we just got to use our mana and wedding announcement. Start making dorks. So opponent gets to flip the faces. We'll see. It would be nice if we could draw another two drops so we could do two things next turn. Opponent land, and Godric gets in for about a million. Yeah, I think we have to block the etchings. We're just taking too much damage here. Huntsman's Redemption. Well, ossification. Grow the questing druid. Gotta get rid of Godric. Pass the turn, make a token. Kind of wish these Huntsman's Redemptions were basically any other card. <laughs> I mean, they're going to make a 3-3. I guess we can take a wedding announcement. I mean, they could be helpful eventually. We'll see if we get to eventually. That's kind of the problem against Mono Red. Helpful eventually is frightening against a deck that can win super quick. So opponent gets and hits us down to 9. Land. Post-combat Godric. We draw Mishra's Foundry. Huntsman's Redemption. Make a 3-3. Mishra's Foundry. Ugh, past the turn. Are we dead? Godric is such a good mono red card. All right, so that turns on Godric. Seven, eight. Yeah, now we're definitely dead. Yeah, mono red, kind of kind of quick. Kind of a quick deck. Godric looking very impressive. And Ginger Brute, sneaky, of course, all star. Yeah, so I mean, technically we go to one. The problem is we don't have a way to win next turn. So we definitely die next turn. Oh, I guess actually this even pumps. Okay, I guess actually we die right now. Wow, Godric is insane. Yeah, Godric is like kind of ridiculous. What do we have against Mono Red? Brothers should end in. Wanding or Emperor Elspeth. I don't know about bringing in five drops, but that's probably our best bet. Go down a Ren. Sort of Forge in Frontier could actually be spectacular. We can even tutor it up. Yeah, Huntsman's Redemption seems very slow in this matchup. Can we get in a farewell somehow? Farewell's a lot of mana, but if we somehow get to it, maybe we get on one Skrelv? Maybe it's just the Wrens. The Wrens are probably just not good enough. Let's try it like that. Bring it, Mono Red. Bring it. <laughs> uh, I think we mulligan. I mean, we'll give this a go. Jetmere's Garden to the bottom. Well, I mean, we'll see. 
we'll see we'll see we'll see we got a couple of removal spells we got the brotherhood end which is really good ginger brute pony gets in for one pass the turn questing druid awkward in this deck i don't know if it's worth playing this turn or not if we wait one more turn then we can play a turtle we'll see what our opponent does sir ginger well in that case i think we just wait the play of planes blow up the board opponent does get to scry so next turn we can ossification and questing druid all right there's a godric down to 15. Now play the land. Ossification. Get rid of the Godric. And yeah, we're gonna wait in a uh, seek the beast here. Opponent, more Godrics. So much haste. Well, let's seek the beast. Plains and Copperline Gorge. Okay. There's a turtle. Well, let's play the turtle. Get a Cabretti Courtyard. Grab a Mountain. Play the Copper Line Gorge past the turn. There's still a Godric opponent. Lightning strikes our turtle. All right, no, no hasty threats. Gets and hits us. Goblin Blast Runner. Well, there's another turtle. <sighs> yeah, let's play the Blossoming Tortoise. Mill some cards. Get a Cabretti Courtyard. Gain a life. Play a Cabretti Courtyard. Gain a life. Uh, now we actually gotta think. So, next turn. So, two for Questing Druid. Two to turn on Bivouac. And then three to equip. Alright, I think we can play the Questing Druid to have another blocker. Alright, pass the turn. We'll see if we're dead. All right, so this is gonna give Godric flying. They can sack the blood to give this menace. Okay. Opponent. I mean, we're gonna block with the questing druid. Well, this is it. We gotta hit the, we gotta hit the combo. We gotta hit the combo. We drop to four. Ossification. Well, step one. Questing druid, seek the beast. Land and Tiver stand. Well, step two, play the questing druid. Ossification. To get rid of the Godric. So this gets menace if they can sack something. But we can't really afford to lose the turtle. Oh, there goes a Draconic Destiny. Get a Mishra's Foundry. I mean, they know we're out of cards, so I guess we might as well get in one extra damage. Boom, hit you. Play the thicket. Well, are we dead? Oh, we we got close. We got really close here. We just couldn't find the Draconic Destiny or the Kellen to tutor up the Draconic Destiny. Opponent attacks. I mean, we definitely block. Brothers at end to sweep the board. And a Sir Ginger. Are we going aggro? I think we're going aggro. Oh, we don't have that much white mana. Huh. This can also gain us two life, which is intriguing. Well, let's attack with Mishra's Foundry. We do need to try to get in some damage. Pass the turn. Attacks. Well, we will fire up the Bivouac. Oh, so it's gonna put us down to one white source, which is so awkward. Uh, yeah, let's play the Bodyguard. Get rid of the Sir Ginger. I was hoping we could get more value out of it, but well, I mean, white, red, whatever. Fire up the Bivouac. Whatever, whatever. Fire up the Foundry. Attack you. Bivouac. Hit you to seven. I mean, maybe we win with this janky beatdown plan, Bonet, Voldir, and Epicure. Wow. Oh, that's actually a brutally bad draw for us. Wow, that blood token to turn on the statuette. Oh no, I think that makes us lose, opponent attacks. So now we have to sack the Werefox bodyguard just to gain enough life to not die. And they draw another, wow. 
We were one turn away. We were so close, but now we're definitely dead. Double Vidir and Epic here for the win. I don't think this even works because we don't have a land to get, so I don't even think we get to gain life. Oh, we still gain the life, so that's a little something. Well, ossification. Get rid of the Surge Inger. I mean, we're not technically dead on board. I can't believe this statuette's doing so much work. On board, we go to one, but our opponent has many things that kill us here. They sack the blood, it turns on the statuette. All right, Blast Runner. Okay, so they're not going for the win. Oh, can we draw the combo? Come on, one time magic gods, one time magic gods. Our opponent's tapped out. All we need is the Draconic Destiny and we go infinite. Come on, deck. Mishra's Foundry. Technically, we have three, four blockers. So we go to three, four blockers. This has Menace. One, two, three, four. There's still many things our opponent can draw. All right, discards a land, turns on the statuette. Yeah. One, fire up a Mishra's Foundry. One, fire up a Mishra's Foundry. Two, fire up a Bivouac. Block, 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 block. All right, let's see what they top decked. We go to one. What did they draw? Oh my goodness, they didn't get it. Wow. Whew. Well, we couldn't find the combo to win the game on the spot, but uh, apparently Turtlewood Creature Lands is, is not bad on its own. In that game, it was good enough at least. Oh boy, this is a frightening matchup, my God. Let's go down to Skrelv for a fateful absence. Try it like that. On the draw, can we beat Mono Red on the draw? I mean, that was a pretty impressive comeback. I mean, I guess it also required our opponent not to draw a Haste Creature or Burn Spell for a lot of turns. So I guess we probably get a little lucky too. We're gonna try this. Wouldn't mind drawing another untap land so we can ossify a turn earlier. Well, uh, all right, Cabretti Courtyard, get a Plains. Yeah, his next draw is really big. If we draw an untapped land so we can ossify, we're in pretty good shape. If we don't, we might be pretty far behind the curve here. Pound it, double ginger brew. Pits us down to 18. And also a blast runner, untapped land. Oh boy, okay. Well, that's not an untapped land. Yeah, this matchup gets even harder when you're on the, when you're on the draw. Opponent gets in, hits us. Down to 15. Well, we draw a tap land. We can ossification to get rid of the blast runner. All right, all right. We would accept more lands. Bone, it hits us. Down to 13. Another blast runner. And a land and a statuette. Oh boy. Oh boy, oh boy. And that's not a land. Okay. Well. Come on, we're Fox Bodyguard. Save us. Bone it. Discards a Volt Surge. Grows the dork. Turns on the statuette. Draws a card. Well, we need this to stick somehow. We're Fox Bodyguard. It does die to like every red removal spell. Oh, okay. Oh, they have removal. A braid. Huh, okay. Well, we are down to eight. Mm, yeah, we're missing a lot of land drops here. Play a Kellen. Many Kel more as many Kellens as lands. Not a uh, not ideal with mono red on the play. Opponent lightning strikes. Okay, gonna keep killing our stuff. Goes attacking. Well, Cabretti Courtyard. That is a land. That is a land. It's very tapped, and we're probably dead. But it is technically a land. Planes, I guess. Play a Kellen. I think our most realistic way of winning is Elspeth giving Kellen lifelink. This does require nothing going horribly wrong this turn, which it definitely could. Like, we could just be dead right now. And then we still need to draw an untap land. Oh, jeez. Okay. Hits us. Down to three. And an epic here. Yeah, that does it. Cool. And we scoop it up. Well, that game two. Game two was sweet. Oh, sounds risky, but we're gonna keep it. 
Uh, let's get Mir's Garden. That makes it a lot less risky. I mean, we're up against Demir, which is probably not ideal, but... We need to find the turtle at some point. Oh, it's us per control. <laughs> well, Cabretti Courtyard. Grab a forest and pass the turn. I think we just questing druid to draw a couple cards. Well, let's uh let's seek the beast. Go digging. A land in Skralve. Well, and that's not the worst. Play Skralve. Play Cabretti Courtyard. Grab a planes. Yeah, let's just uh, birthright boon here. Grab a Draconic Destiny. Wow, Pwned just cycles for Fiend's Tower. So we have the Mishra's Foundry. So we got the creature land. We do need to find the turtle. I like that we have double Tiver stand if we can... Uh... Well, there's Draconic Destiny. Part two. We have many Draconic Destinies. Uh, let's play Mishra's Foundry. Play a Kellen. I think we just pass for now. So I think against us per control, we need to just like keep surviving and then combo kill. That's the idea anyway. Unfortunately, our opponents rast all exile, but this can fizzle most of the targeted removal. All the targeted removal passes. Well, play the land about it. Well, let's birthright boon again. I think we just grabbed the sword. Yeah, let's grab the sword. Yeah, I guess we play it. I'm sure our opponent has a bunch of counters. All right, there's counter number one, Dissipate. How close are we to one-shotting with Kellen? Like, if we can get our opponent... One, two, three. So it's three power, four, five, six. So Kellen can 12? Not that far off. Going to Sunfall. Yup. Well, there's Rev number one. Well, play Copperline Gorge, Kellen, number two. Are we going to Questing Druid? Actually, we probably should, right? The problem is they can counter the Kellen with Make Disappear. Yeah, let's just Kellen. I think our best plan here at the moment is actually just to try to one-shot with Kellen. Pwned, going to transform. One, two. Three. So this is three power. Four, five, six, seven. Ah, oh, but we need the Tiver stand. We're kind of close. Ponet combat passes. So if we attack, Wandering Emperor is definitely a thing. That would make us spend a Tiver stand, but we have another one. All right, just gonna block. That's fine. Now let's questing druid. Ponet memory daily. Sure. Opponent passing. Well, let's seek the beast. Grow the druid. Well, I guess we might as well play this Werefox bodyguard. I mean, I think this is the turn that we go for it. We'll see if it works. We draw a tap land. Well, I mean, I think this is our best shot. So. This is not the turtle combo, but red, red, whatever. Draconic Destiny on Kellen. Play the Goblin Gorge. I mean, we have double Tiver stand. Wandering Emperor. Okay, that's fine. All right, so we will Tiver stand on the Kellen. Another Wandering Emperor. Oh, we got it. Oh my goodness, we got it. We actually, actually got it. Our opponent's gonna try to Wandering Emperor and we're gonna tie for a stand again. This time X2 and wow. There we go. Hit ya, kill ya. <laughs> okay, taking down Esper Control. So we didn't combo off, but we navigated through this Unfalls and, uh, and managed to pick up the win. That was actually pretty, pretty impressive. So, uh, I think we actually go down the Werefox Bodyguards. Go down one Huntsman's Redemption. We kind of want the Elspeth. Things that kill Planeswalkers seem relevant. I assume our opponent's mostly on the on the Planeswalker plan. Oh, Tiber Stand protects from some stuff, but not everything. Flipping... Flipping a Gabacon would be pretty nice. Yeah, let's try it like that. 
All right. Well, I mean, that was not the infinite combo, but that was actually a pretty impressive win. That was a very adventure Kelly win, but we will, uh, we'll take it. We'll take it against one of the top decks in standard. Uh, well, this hand has combo pieces, but no lands. All right, this will keep. Uh, we will put ossification to the bottom for now. Well, we got a turtle this time, which is nice. Tap land go. Uh, boon it. Well, let's uh, do a little birthright booning. Snag a draconic destiny. A uh, boon it. Plays a land. Well, hmm. Yeah, let's rage with verge thick and run out Kellen. I mean, Kellen's not super essential to our plans. Like, it's mostly to be a tutor. Geoldred. Well, yeah, I mean, I think we just turtle. Hopefully we mill a land. Okay, we mill a Mishra's Foundry. There still is a Shielder on the battlefield, which is not good for us, of course. Oh, uh, boom, it passes. Well, okay, we get drained. Let's play Bivouac. Pass. Opponent's gonna memory deluge. All right, I mean, there is actually a chance that we go infinite next turn. Beating a counter spell is gonna be tricky. Opponent draws two. That's gonna be the challenge. How do we how do we navigate around a counter? Opponent land. Go for the throw of the sky turtle. Well, we will Tiver stand it. Opponent passes. We get drained. We have the combo. If our opponent has a counter, that defeats us. So we fire at Mishra's Foundry. One, two, three. Yeah, any counter gets us. Should we go in a different direction? Does it get better if we go in a different direction? We could play Ren and Realm Breaker to try to get a counter out of our opponent's hand. Yeah, let's Ren and Realm Breaker. See if our opponent has a counter. Well, if they do, they didn't use it. Play the tap land. Tick down Ren and Realm Breaker. Ooh, get an ossification. Okay, we need a basic though. All right, pass the turn. Makes a samurai. How do we not have a basic yet? All right, Shieldra does its thing. Takes up on the dork. Everything at Ren. Opponent land. Passes. Well, we draw and get trained. Ossification. Well, I mean, we have to go for it. Mishra's Foundry. Draconic Destiny. Hold. Oh my goodness. Okay. Go to combat. Opponent blocks. Well, okay. Uh, pump. Pump. Wait, is this happening? Is this happening? Pump. We're going to keep doing this. And we got the Skrelv. Are we done? Do we beat Esper Control? Do we beat Esper Control with Turtle Power? They could have two removal spells. We dodge Go for the Throat naturally, so they need two non-Go for the Throat removal spells. Cut down doesn't work. Oh, they scoop it up! Oh my goodness, we actually did it. We actually did it. <laughs> that seems like such a tough matchup. Esper Control is overloaded with removal encounters, and somehow Turtle Power sneaks through. I mean, we knew this all day. Like, it's free to activate. We're our assembly worker dragon. If you had told me that the match we'd win is Esper Control, I would not have believed you. Mm -mm, no, ch no chance. <laughs> but we will not complain. Hmm, not bad. So what do we learn this week about infinite turtle power combo in Wilds of Eldorade Standard? And record-wise, eh, the deck wasn't great. We played 12 matches. We won four, which is exactly a 33.3 for infinity win percentage, which I guess is kind of flavorful for an infinite power combo deck. But anyway, like, uh, you're not going to win any Pro Tours, most likely, with turtle power. I think that we saw the good and the bad of the deck. The good news is the combo does work, and most of our wins were from the combo and even in matches that we ended up losing we often were able to like at least combo off once so it's not like the combos impossible to pull off we did it many times throughout all of our matches the hard part is ah, 
the combo does kind of get got by interaction, and we're trying to work around this with the Screlves and the Tiver stands and all the protection, but even with all that, it's still a really removal and interaction heavy standard. So a lot of times we like play turtle and it dies, and then we find another one eventually and it dies, and then we get sad and we never combo off and we just can't close out the game. So I think the deck does a good job of trying to do the combo, but the combo, it is kind of slow. It does get disrupted by removal. So it's really kind of the perfect against the odds deck in a lot of ways. I would be very surprised to see infinite turtle power be a real like top tier deck in standard. You just need too many pieces. It's a little too fragile, but it is a really hilarious way to just get people by surprise when they're not expecting and close out the game. So that is infinite turtle power. That's been our against the odds for this week. Thanks for watching everyone. I hope you enjoy it and I will talk to you soon.